Okay, now let's move on to the reading for today from Something You Forgot Along the Way, Stories of Wisdom and Learning. Today's story is number 45, page 122. The importance of quick wittedness, the salesman and the housewife. A salesman rang the doorbell and asked to speak to the lady of the house. A woman grudgingly appeared and asked him haughtily, what do you want? Is the lady of the house at home? Looking even more displeased, the woman said curtly, I am the lady of the house, what is it? Oh, I'm so sorry I didn't realize the salesman bowed his head apologetically as he pulled out a catalog. The truth is you're so young and pretty that I mistook you for the daughter, forgive me. People are so conceited that they fall even for obvious flattery. The woman's attitude changed as easily as a child forgets its tears, like a clear sky after a drizzle. Oh, what a flatterer, she simpered. And what do you have there? I wonder if there's anything I need. Could I see it? The salesman's success was due to his shrewd understanding of human nature. The following story also illustrates the importance of quick wittedness. One night, someone collided with the manager of a store as he came around the corner. Since the manager always scolded his clerks for their blunders, from force of habit, he barked, fool. Then seeing to his consternation that the other person was his boss, the company president, he swiftly added with a bow, am I not? Good night, sir. After this dazzling display of quick wittedness, the president was unable to get angry and went on his way with a chuckle. Though we must refrain from calling others fools, it would certainly be nice to have the kind of mind that can react so quickly. Okay, this is also two very beautiful and uh, <clears throat> thought-provoking stories about the importance of quick-wittedness. And uh, yeah, so the first story about, um, first of all, the importance of being quick to discover something good in others and commend them for it. If we do that uh, as a habit, usually our habit or instinct, the ego is that we see people's flaws and shortcomings and it comes to our mind. So sometimes it, it comes through our speech too, because there's no filter for a lot of people. They say what comes to their mind. So it destroys relationships, unfortunately. So if we learn Buddhism more and more deeply, we become so mindful of what's going on in our own minds and thoughts that we can uh, be aware of how hurtful our words can be. So in this way, we can transform them. So that's the power of awareness or what they say knowledge is power. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, so actually people can change so quickly. They can change their mind just like we saw how the woman who felt offended uh, even asked the salesman, oh, let me look at your catalog. I wonder if there's anything I need. So people change. It all depends on our attitude and how we constantly rectify or correct the mistakes we make and try to build relationships instead of destroying them. So that's a beautiful message here. And then also something I love is uh, just like today's phrase a day, do not be uh, <clears throat> depressed by failure nor elated by success. As you saw in the story, the salesman didn't get depressed just because he made a huge mistake thinking that whoever opened the uh, door was not the lady of the house. Uh, he immediately said, oh, you're so young and pretty. I thought you were the daughter. So <clears throat> he he was able to actually correct his mistake very quickly. 
because on a daily basis, probably he is practicing um, these teachings to not get depressed over mistakes so quickly. Yeah, this is our tendency. We easily get depressed. But in Buddhism, we learn that, you know, when we make a mistake, that's an opportunity for growth because we can reflect and improve. And one mistake doesn't mean everything is over. It's just a one incident. It's not a reflection of our whole existence. So to be able to separate our inherent self-worth from the mistakes we make every day, that can be the fuel for our progress as we do self-improvement. So that's a very um, rare blessing and it's wisdom. So good job, everyone, for being here, dedicating this time to the practice of recitation meditation for our mental health and spiritual growth. Today is Wednesday. We're going to have the Karma Lab at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Have a beautiful Wednesday, everyone. Bye-bye.